as a young person I, f I was shy and I didn't really maybe communicate with other people on a great level but as I became well known for graffiti when I met people that maybe I may not have had a lot to say to in the past I met them as Drax they already knew kind of what I was all about and that I was prolific and that I was a dedicated writer and they had that element of respect for me I don't want any fame, I don't want any exposure but my, my name the persona that I invented for myself in the graffiti world, I wanted that to be famous, and I still do yearn for that. The one thing about graffiti that I think that people lost along the way is a respect for it and, and fellow people doing it. Other writers will, that aren't as well known will go over a famous person to make a name for themselves. When you do stuff like that, you show no consideration for the guy who done the art. That's suckerness, you know? You're not getting nowhere by come writing your name in somebody's piece, you know? When you could be home practicing on paper, what you gonna do the next time when you get big, when you get old enough to do a piece. But the bottom line is, if you never have a writer who thinks he is nasty as the next man, then you ain't gonna have writing because you always got somebody who wanna prove that they as good as the next guy who's doing a piece. The spots I choose mostly are spots which are seen by many people but that doesn't mean that I do them because of the people seeing them because it's just because I myself pass those spots often it fills most of my time which I am awake I paint alone mostly so I have the possibility to think with every painting there are thoughts connected I got used to just getting my cans on my own and just walk outside in the night, even if it's cold, if it's raining, other people are just sitting at home and maybe watching TV, fucking their wives, just doing stuff that everybody does and I'm able to express myself. I want to be known, in a hundred years, only a couple of names will be remembered, I want to be one of them. gonna be what you say a true legendary writer like me myself and I who was the one and only member of the Fantastic Partners crew who really made what this is now you know what I'm saying from lettering to designs and everything else you know now you got these dudes who do these big productions to make themselves look good as a writer because you know it's better without doing it on the train when you got walls but back in the days if you didn't have whole cars on the subway and plenty of them you was considered straight up toy what is it top to bottom they wanted to see this traveling around on the system so they could point to it and say, that's my work, that's my tag. And I used to love to see your morning strap hangers, reading their newspaper, drinking a cup of coffee, and all of a sudden this train comes rolling into the station and they glance up, you know, sometimes you see them drop their cup of coffee and the newspaper and then you see this whole thing of colors and pulling into the station. A train yard is something like a playground for you. You enter it and it has certain rules. It has a certain atmosphere. We know where to go, how to go, so we never get really busted. 
you don't see yourself as a criminal. You just see yourself like as a very slick, uh, cool, clever boy who's tried to give his art somewhere to the public and gets away with it. You know, like a fighter who wants to hunt a lion for the first time, you gotta prove his, his maturity. It's just like the whole action. It's like an act, sort of like the last adventure you can get in the city. We found after we did some surveys that the public were very concerned about this type of damage. In addition to that, of course, London Underground, I think it was costing them, when we first started, about two million pounds a year. That went up to four million pounds, although it's decreased subsequently. No, like the whole town was sleeping and you went through the maddest night, you know. A few people have done that side, a few people have done that thing there. What the boy in the middle keeping dog. Everyone's doing it. Next minute all I hear is run, the run. It's just good doing it all together. It's just a good thing that like, uh, you'd have to do it to understand properly. Uh, British Transport Police, they're behind, they just parked up behind the bus. Everyone was crouching down and hiding under the seats. And I remember Zonk, he was actually ducking down. He paid the man like that. <laughs> paid the man. <laughs> like, I was upstairs shitting myself. 